Hello. Like Yogi said, I am Liam, and I love working on long-term projects that I get to design myself. Sometimes it's hard to find classmates who are interested in the same thing that I am. For example, I'm really curious about why e to the power of i x is the cosine of x plus i times the sine of x. I mean, that's fascinating stuff. <laughs> Just kidding. I really want to learn about things like paradoxes and logic puzzles and all sorts of brain twisters that leave me thinking but hurt other people's heads, like my mom's. Being able to do these things with Yogi, who can teach me some of the complicated stuff, has been very interesting and fun, and definitely a lot better than class. I mean, who would choose adding fractions over crazy word problems that barely make any sense? Working with Liam has been an absolutely extraordinary opportunity for me. I've learned so much that I don't even know where to begin. And I'm guessing some of you might be a bit skeptical and you might be thinking, okay, all you did was teach a fifth grader a bunch of math and stuff, right? Well, I also taught him how to browse naughty stuff on the internet without his parents finding out. <laughs> Joke aside, teaching is learning twice over. Joseph Joubert, a famous French moralist, said that. This quote has gained a very new meaning for me ever since I've worked with Liam. There's always been the literal meaning that a teacher must know the material he is teaching twice over, once for his own sake and understanding, and a second time over so he can effectively communicate it to his students. But the meaning I've derived from this is that teaching is learning to know yourself and learning to know your student. Yes, that is my name and my title up on the screen. Now, what I mean by this is that we all experience reality differently. And teaching is essentially showing a little part of your reality to someone else. Essentially, you have to make someone see what you see. And I believe you can't really do that unless you first see what he sees. And in case this is getting too complicated, what I mean is that I believe effective mentorship and teaching are almost exclusively based on empathy and understanding. And really, it's in that short moment when you try to empathize with someone to teach him something, you actually get a glimpse of your own character with a different perspective added onto it. For example, me and Liam would solve word problems and logic puzzles, and whenever I would come across one that took me more than five to 10 minutes to understand, I would say, okay, let's move on. And my reasoning behind this was, okay, I'm a higher level math student. If it takes me this long to understand something, it would take ages to explain, which would be valuable time lost, which we could better spend maybe learning more stuff. And I do realize it is quite arrogant now. But whenever I would do this, all of a sudden, I would feel disconnected from Liam because he wouldn't move on to the next problem. He would still struggle with the previous one. And I would realize I could be of so much more help to him if I just learned to struggle and persevere with him. And that's how I knew maybe I was being a bit too impatient. What I'm getting at is that mentoring or teaching someone something is an amazing tool for self-development. And hence, I believe that if we all sat down and explained some brain twisters to a fifth grader, we could all be a bit better and make the world a better place. It's interesting that you say that, Georgi, because I have a tendency to get frustrated with problems I can't solve immediately, and I thought I was learning from you not to give up. I guess we were learning from each other. Wait, this makes my head hurt. Who was teaching who and who was learning from who? Well, who cares? That's a lot of who's. <laughs> anyway, it's pretty cool that that can happen. Indeed it is. Now, I have a brother who is 12 years old, which would make him a bit older than Liam. And I have to admit, I've never been too good at communicating with him, as most instances of us communicating would end up like this for him and like this for me. And I think this situation, we can all agree, is not particularly fair or nice. Well, this was one of my biggest worries when I found out that I was working with Liam. And I don't mean this situation in particular, but rather the issue it embodies, which is the difficulty in finding an appropriate way of communication when the age difference is so big. I remember the first meeting we had, I was just very nervous thinking, okay, how should I treat Liam? Do I treat him like a peer or do I treat him like a baby? What if a bad word slips my mouth? All these various questions were racing through my mind. The first few meetings were pretty awkward for me too. I mean, meeting with someone who's almost twice your age teaching you complicated math that barely makes sense. I enjoyed getting in class, but I didn't really know George yet. I'm not sure that either of us really knew what we, what we were gonna do. The first few times, we just played with Legos and talked only a bit. But in that time, I remember thinking, okay, it's kind of cool that I can still play with Legos when I'm 17. And if 
thinking about having an opportunity like this, you have to remember that it takes time. It certainly does take time. Even to this day, sometimes it's kind of hard to know that if something that's interesting for me is also interesting for Liam. For example, in a relatively recent meeting we had, we, we were looking at TED Talks, and I found this TED Talk about the economic recession of 2008. And being interested in the subject, I just immediately jumped on it, but halfway through the talk, I noticed that Liam was falling asleep. And I realized, okay, maybe socioeconomic interactions aren't as interesting to a fifth grader as I might have thought. Yeah, George, what were you thinking? <laughs> well, what George doesn't know is that one, I love watching TED Talks, and two, even when I watch them that I don't fully understand, I'm able to walk away thinking about it. I ask a lot of questions at home. Also, a lot of the time, I'm left wondering how I could help or how I could do whatever that talk was saying. There is no universal answer to the age-old question of effective communication. Sometimes figuring out what interests others is a trial and error process, but as such, it is an extremely rewarding one because you learn some very important things. You learn how to communicate, you learn how to deal with an awkward situation, you learn how to listen to the other person and how to understand him. You learn empathy. Yes, well, I don't really understand George's social life. I am only 10. I did find that I could emphasize with school workload and common interests like math and riddles. I learned I have a lot more in common with older people than I thought, which makes me think that maybe we all have a lot more in common than we notice. Absolutely. And if you're wondering why is all this important, here's why I think it is important. In this day and age, we have so many channels and means of communication. We have Facebook, we have Messenger, Snapchat, Instagram, all these things. And it's kind of ironic because although we have all these different means of communication, we've actually lost some of our ability of self-expression. Nowadays, no one walks up to a girl and asks her out in person. It's all done through Messenger. Nowadays, we don't go up to the person we love, look him in the eyes and say, I love you, and feel the awesome wave of adrenaline and excitement wash over us. We send heart emojis, and the bigger they are, the more love, I guess. And I can safely say, the tutoring a fifth grader or mentoring him is the first step to regaining that lost paradise of communication. On this note, I think it's important to say how much Liam has actually schooled me. Now, I hope all of you have read The Little Prince, and if not, I guess you should be wondering what you're doing with your lives. I just read that book. Even though it was hard to comprehend, it was very deep and philosophical. Did I say that right? <laughs> philosophical. I think the meaning is that we all imagine and use our imaginations, but it'll simply deny it. Absolutely. And if you remember, one of the most iconic moments of The Little Prince is when the narrator is talking about how all the grown-ups misinterpret his drawing of a boa constrictor that has devoured an elephant as a hat. And this is, of course, the image I'm referring to. Well, what I want to say is that Liam has taught me how to see the boa constrictor and the elephant time over and time over again, opposed to the hat. It's amazing how much perspective we lose when we grow up under the pretext that the views we hold are naive or childish. And really, that's why I think one of the best things for someone my age or even older is to sit down and immerse yourself in one of Liam's drawings or a children's book. Because when you do that, you start thinking for a brief moment like a child again. And when you think like a child, you believe like a child. And that means you believe you can be Superman. You believe you can be a Jedi when you grow up. You believe that kindness brings to happy endings like in fairy tales. You believe in yourself, which I think is very crucial when it comes to transforming communities. Because as Steve Jobs once rightfully said, the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Hey, George, are you telling me I can't be a Jedi when I grow up? Anyway... Even though scheduling this was sometimes hard and sometimes George just had to join me in class, I think it paid off and I think it's something other schools should put some effort into because, it wor because it's worth it. And in international schools, you already have all these age groups working in the same space, so why don't we make this part of their daily routine? Absolutely, and I would like to take this opportunity to make a call to action to our school and all the other schools around the world that will ever see this. Planned cross-age collaborations are a form of education like no other. And like most other things in life, they shouldn't be forced upon people, but I deeply believe they should be encouraged and supported by for because, believe me, they are worth it. Thank you very much.